here we go. Here's some footage from inside and on top of Keyhole Cave here. This is where I came up. I had to rock climb up a little bit here. Very cool. All right, now I'm gonna take the camera. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more. I heard uh, of people sleeping up here. There's all kinds of um, drawings. Hey, look at MM. All kinds of it up here. Really cool. And out there is the city of Sedona. So I had some really cool things going on here today. First I wanna talk about um, spiritually, spirituality, spirituality spiritual journeys, stuff like that. Um, great thing to look into is spirit science. That comes very into um, experience, decryption, understanding, omnipresence. Omnipresence is a very big one. Because that's um, one thing I want to cure in the universe is uh, like voices in my head, not me personally. But the voices in my head disorder, disease, I think has to do with biology as technology, decryption protocols, and poisoning that. So people that are in the know, know how to poison others, and then now they have voices in their head, a problem. Versus like, let's say telepathy, meaning like somebody's fully in control and they know exactly what they're doing. Voices in your head not in control, that's a problem. And that's something to cure. Something same as uh, seeing ghosts. That might have to do with um, wave decryption um, overlays. Something maybe something to do with bio augmented reality. I mean bio tech augmented into a way that it's now um, reality. But I'm getting a little bit off the topic. I really wanted to talk about spiritual journeys and. Um, Fulfillment, getting fulfillment, and um, even this hike, this hike is fulfilling. I planned it yesterday, I was at Walmart, I was like, I'm gonna buy a tripod, I'm gonna go out on a hike, I'm gonna get a, some good foot footage and make a YouTube video and make, some, make a film. But on the way up here, I feel like I'm talking about and thinking about like super technological things all the time, like what we can do in order to advance our species, to advance esports especially. Esports is the number one thing. Like I don't want people bringing in thumb drives and making, you know, their own esport basically. Like if you can cheat, it's not a sport anymore. <laughs> That's besides the point. Let's not go into that topic twice. 
the knob topping. But yeah, this is a beautiful spot. I wanted to talk about an experience that I had here that has to do with this the preface knowledge is um, I have what I call multiversal awareness. And it, it's, it's an order, meaning I, I have control over it. Um, and I had it on, meaning I was selecting it and, and like feeling around. When I came up here one night and right where I'm sitting, there was a big giant dragon and he was not in our realm and he was more so in the multiverse, in his own universe, kind of in a way where God is protecting us from a more dominant species than us, where we are the top of the food chain here. And that's to do with a blessing where in your mind or in your perception, um, a lot of the times you are at the top of your food chain. And that has to do with weight classing, which is gonna be my last video if you wanna check that out. But I'm not gonna double video takes here. I just made that video down there on the ridge line on a different mountain. But God weight classes us. He puts us in the place that we belong to be put in to um, be with similars, find similars that we enjoy the company of. And that day when I seen the dragon up here, he was like, I'm not gonna chill here if you, such a powerful being, is gonna come up here and be inside me, be on top of me. Like he was right here. He was like, I'm not gonna have your vibrational vibrations affecting and altering my experience. I'm that old, I'm that wise, I know these things. And he just glided off and then took off. And I felt him the whole time. And he was kind of consenting to, uh, to um, transcribe this to me. It felt like a he. It was more like an elder conscious being, male-ish. Um, big and um, it was more like a ghost to me. I didn't see him or nothing like that I just felt him and knew that he was there and we could like speak to each other with vibrations and ideas And that's something to do with the spiritual journey spiritual path is being able to be um, Enlightened to that point is this area apparently is a famed to be Inhabited by Octarians, and Octarians are eight spatial dimensional beings that live up in the mountain ridge here. And I was just channeling in earlier, I was like, how do they live out here without homes? Like, doesn't it freeze over, like, during the winter? And I was informed that it doesn't freeze over for them. Like, the temperatures are different, it's more, like, controlled. Like, each individual's habitat is a terrarium that has sustainability for them and I myself I'm Matthew the Archangel and I don't speak that a whole lot it's kind of ego but it's not I earned it this life I am the rank of Matthew the Archangel and I deserve that rank there's other things in my name like Matthew Michael and uh, the last name is Masadi I was told those are God King names so I'm a God King Archangel, apparently. But there's a thing with ego, is um, ego inflated. Ego is usually per pertaining to like um, heightened self-definition, past which that is true. But there's also that which is perfect ego, meaning if you know exactly who you are and what you are and you define it as such, you are perfectly ego. You have a perfect definition of your personality. If you are ego lacking, then you have something like depression or you are self um, minimalizing yourself into less than your perfect ego. So, mm -hmm. wasn't me. <laughs> but um, yeah, in this uh, human experience, it, it's like a creation. That's what the people really need to start thinking in. It removes anxiety. Your spiritual journey is um, that which you make up but not that which you make up is, which is fake, unless you want it to be fake. But don't 
cross, don't blur the lines. I see people that I deal with, and I, I am a very adept um, truth seer, meaning I see things in truth. I mean, if somebody is seeing things where tr they're mixing true and false, is it like this? I see that. I see that in their personality. Like they're a gray soul, they're a gray spirit, or they're too dark, meaning they're putting too many um, falses into the truths and trying to make them true. But if you're perfectly light in your soul, then you're ego perfect. And that just means you're in the right place or you know the place very well and know how to be in the right place even though you might be in the wrong place, but you're still a life spirit. That might have to do with being a rainbow being, meaning you can be in many places um, and be perfectly ego, not just perfectly ego, but like perfect um, universe definitions, meaning you're not living in Babylon. Babylon means you live in the illusion, meaning you're living in a fake universe. Um, being in the true universe means you are closest to God, closest to creator. Meaning if you recreate your universe and you land 100% true, every little facet, um, it probably takes a long time to get something like Earth 100% true because imagine knowing everything in China and all that. You gotta know every single place. Like That's just ridiculous. You have to be an elder, supreme ancient entity studying every single little thing like and even then you're not going to be perfectly true because you're going to miss particle alignments and wave alignments and potential futures that's something for like ancient source like that's unfathomable ancient elder god infinity super infinite because every potential possible wave particle gas photon photons a wave too but you know think about it as there's infinite many different kind of waves you can invent them and then put them into your universe. You know, and that's just your universe. You could be witnessing all these different things and then superimposing into our universe. And that's another thing I want to get into is the um, Illuminati infinite power. Uh, take infinity verse every bug every soul every human every animal every conscious being has their own universe and it costs nothing to do host the universes like that because factorial ingredients redundancies when you have the entire universe this place that we live in, extrapolated. Um, to add a new soul is just one factorial block. It's just one little difference than another soul. Because now forevermore they're that. And no one will ever be that. They can pretend to be that as much as it, you want. You can self-identify with anything you want and whatever you truly are in the moment is that which you are that's what your ego is, truly. And if somebody else wants to mock your ego or impersonate your ego, they can only impersonate it or mock it. They can never be it. They can never be you. Because of the differentiating factor that you were created at this moment. And they were created at that moment. And no other being is this or that. Unless you want to play pretend. Because two separate beings will remain two separate beings forever. And... I like it that way. I like every person having their own universe and every single person having their own consents. And I want that to be the, the weight classes of the universe. So we position ourselves within the tree of life and the roots of death appropriately. Because every single being should not be out of place. We should not have demons on earth. On Earth, it's like the base point for light. It's like the starting point where um, evil is starting to turn to a more civilized position. It's in a gray area, but it's a light place. That's how I see Earth. I know Earth to be that. It's portrayed by that by me infinite many. 
um, the Kabbalah, I heard at the bottom of the Kabbalah represents earth and the other points on, on there represent the trees of life that are immediately allied with growing above human experience to another avatar location, a place where you can experience space-time in a humanoid-like fashion. And it's not necessarily humanoid-like fashion. I've heard of people like uh, the god Vishnu. He is a dog on Earth right now because he said, I want to be a dog, I want to be a dog, I want to be a dog, and then eventually he became a dog because of he just stuck to his word. He wanted to be a dog in human um, realm because he was a humanoid. And he wanted that, and he got it. And I know that to be true because I met him in real life. He's a telepathic dog. It's very magical. It's wild. And um, we'll get into some super, super deep stuff here. Super cool. But um, I, I met a lot of really cool entities in the last two years. Krishna. Um, Krishna taught me ways of thinking that were new to me. I could think faster and more in any moment than before. And that has to do with a dual speak. I can speak a sentence while speaking a sentence. I can speak a paragraph in a flash. I can download a paragraph in a flash. I can just go bam and recall a paragraph in a flash. If I've already read a paragraph, I can go bam. If I want to make a new paragraph to an answer to something that I'm thinking of, I can go bam and it's done. I speak 40 words or 100 words or more in just an idea. And you all have that too. I had it when I was a kid, I just didn't know how to like put it into thought or explain it. I was thinking of infinite time before us at like five. And infinite time before us means, um, I said these words to my friend once, he was like, if there is, if everything goes on infinitely, right here has to happen infinite times. And I said, it has to. And, but he said the opposite. He said, but infinite non-parallel is the counter to that. He said, it can constantly be changing because of infinite. And I was like, I didn't understand that. I said, no, it has to repeat exactly infinite times. And I fixated on that so much. And now with the uh, one universe per, per conscious being theory that I've been just centralizing around so much, that really hits home hard because even at five, I was thinking another way, another language of one universe per conscious being. But I wasn't thinking of it that way. And he was saying it's always different. And it is. It's both at the same time. Just because I zoom in a little bit and forget about it's always different. It looks always the same. But if I zoom out, it's always different. Just like before when I was talking about no other being is you. No other being is me. We are all one being. And no other being is our one being. Even if you represent yourself as two beings, like you say, you ride with your soulmate or your soulmate rides with you, or soulmates, or whatever it is that tickles your fancy. <laughs> Not to laugh at you, but to laugh about it. Well, yeah, these are serious topics, serious times, especially with um, what I would have called the darkness army, the dark army. Well, let's get it super woke right now. I had some interactions with the Dark Army leader, Dark Army leaders. I've been in negotiations with them. And I practice, you sh do not negotiate with terrorists. And I also practice infinite reformability. So if you act like a terrorist in the moment, you do not get negotiations, you get demands. And I re highly recommend that form of logic to you all. If um, somebody comes out acting like a terrorist in the moment, meaning they are terrorizing, trickstering, you know, raping, 
or not practicing consent or not practicing is not both neither law is not both and neither are four separate laws in simultaneous motion every place and everything is not both and neither because infinite many will never see that or don't see that because in that moment only that which saw it saw it so everything you think of follows Everything is, everything is not, everything is both, everything is neither, which is uh, a law that I came up with and cannot break. I do not see it as being broken because even itself follows that. If you select it, it is. If you do not exist, it is neither. If you've never thought of it and cannot select it yet, it is not which automatically makes it both or all of the above. <laughs> Everything is all of the above. That, I'll add that one <laughs> to that. That is a, uh, an example of being a empath, meaning you can put yourself in other people's shoes. That is a rule format to help you escape the finiteness that I was just speaking of earlier. When you zoom in to just your own and you have all of these definitions and, and uh, desires and finiteness, finite definitions, and you forget that there are infinite others that follow the both or not or neither clauses because all of that which you are resonating with is and when you de-resonate, it is a knot because you push it out of your senses, out of your universe, out of your realm. You say this is not. Which makes that not is. That not is a thing. And you made it so. But I think I, I'm getting to the point I'm going to wrap up the video. This is a very, very nice talk. I'm very happy I got to share these things with you guys. Um, a lot more spiritually centric videos to come. Now that I have this tripod, I can go out filming in random locations and tell you guys about some of my stories. Maybe I will tell you guys about when I, I got a message in and it was God saying, I'm sending you two angels. And then a man named Charlie, who also goes by Jesus, <laughs> came into my life. And I'll tell you guys about our adventures one time when I'm over in the area in which I first met Jesus in his new, new vessel. But I'm out. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.